The Samsung S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max are the most powerful phones in the world right now. But which one is the best? So I did a ton of testing on both these phones and I think you guys are gonna be surprised at the results. So starting off with cameras and Samsung really bought their A-game with the Ultra because it now comes with a 200 megapixel camera whereas the iPhone 14 Pro Max only has a 48 megapixel cam. On the S23 Ultra, you can zoom a lot more into your photos and get some great detail out of them. I also prefer the colors from Samsung shots as opposed to iPhone's more cool tone pics. The S23 Ultra also kills it when it comes to zoom as opposed to iPhone where you can only zoom in to 15 times and on the Samsung, as you probably know, you can zoom in by 100 times and the results honestly speak for themselves. Samsung is like god tier. Night shots, they also both perform amazingly well but Samsung does just get a bit more detail. As for the video, the S23 Ultra can shoot up to 8K whereas the iPhone 14 Pro Max still only shoots up to 4K. 4K. But the thing is, even though the iPhone is only 4K, the image quality is amazing. And as for stabilization, they both perform really well. As for selfie videos, the Samsung can film up to 4K in 60 frames, the iPhone only up to 30 frames. But I will admit, I still preferred the iPhone selfie video over Samsung. It just had a much more natural look. So both of these do an amazing job, but the point has to go to the S23 Ultra because its cameras can just do more and they do it really well. Both these phones are the fastest phones in the world right now. We have a made for Samsung Snapdragon chip and an A16 Bionic on the iPhone. And if you're wondering what that means, well basically these phones will never give you any issues when it comes to day-to-day -day use and multitasking. But you will see a difference with these phones when it comes to some things like powering on. iPhone just turned on much faster and it took Samsung a little while to catch up, but only by a couple of seconds. The same thing when opening up a game, iPhone was just faster booting things up every time, but when it comes to actual gameplay, you'll hardly see a difference and they're both pretty much identical. And then surprisingly I imported the exact same 4K clip into both and exported them and the Samsung actually rendered it much faster than the iPhone which was definitely interesting. So I'm going to give this point to the 14 Pro Max because overall it just feels faster and handles apps better but let me buy a smidge. Now we gotta talk about the pixels on these puppies because believe it or not, they're actually better than most TVs out there. And what you might have not known is Samsung not only makes the best displays in the world, but they also make them for the iPhone 14s. So it's kind of no surprise that Samsung kept the best screen for themselves, but where the iPhone does outshine it is literally in the nits at 2000. But in my testing, the Samsung seemed better and brighter but maybe because it has a better display? What iPhone did however do this year is add the always on display and it honestly looks so cool and I much prefer it to Samsung's always on display that's kind of starting to feel stale. Regardless, the S23 Ultra screen is better for watching movies and just general content. So this point goes to the Samsung, but how good are the batteries in these? I'm not gonna lie, this was a tough one because both these phones actually have really great battery life. I was a bit disappointed in the 14 Pro Max only because of last year's 13 Pro, its battery just seemed to last longer. But the S23 Ultra, however, had much bigger improvements over the previous S22 Ultra. When I charged both these phones with the same 45 watt charging brick, the 23 Ultra took one hour and 10 minutes to fully charge, whereas iPhone took almost double that. But regardless, you'll hardly see a difference in both these phones when it comes to battery drain. And by the end of the day, you'll probably have around 30 to 40 percent of battery life left but I did notice Samsung lasting slightly longer. It really just depends on what apps I use because each phone is optimized differently for each app. But if you ask me a few minutes difference really makes no difference. So with almost identical battery life this point actually goes to the S23 Ultra only because that two hour charging time on the 14 Pro Max? No. Okay, now let's chat about how easy it is to actually use these phones. When it comes to iPhone, turning things on like the flashlight and adjusting the brightness is so easy. But with Samsung, it just seems to take so many more steps like opening up quick settings, tapping and holding, turning on, only then you can adjust the brightness. And it may seem trivial, but it does actually make a big difference. Another example is accessing Wi-Fi passwords. So often I need to put in a password on my TV or some other device. And with iPhone, you can so easily see what that password is. But with Samsung, it's just not quite as easy 
easy. You can go to the Wi-Fi settings and open up a QR code, but my TV can't take a picture and it gets pretty difficult. Don't get me wrong, Samsung still have a ton of pros, like adjusting your home screen grid size, easily being able to close all your applications with one click, and actually having a simple number pad at the top of your keyboard. Like, why don't iPhone have this? But at the end of the day, the 14 Pro Max, you hardly ever see any lagging, freezing, or bugs. It's all just fluid and responsive. And I gotta say, I personally prefer the system sounds on iPhone. The camera, airdrop, and system startup, it all just adds to a really nice user experience. Don't get me wrong, Samsung have gotten a lot better, but to me, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is just a bit more polished, giving it that extra edge. So the iPhone gets this point. Now let's chat about customization with these phones because recently something crazy happened where iPhone released their iOS 16 update and it was actually so much better than Samsung's customization options until Samsung released their One UI 5 update and added even more customization than before. So it's kind of crazy how they both now have an almost identical lock screen setup where you can adjust the clock, fonts, colors, gradients. But at the same time, it's also really cool because we just get more options. But Samsung does just take it a step further with things like color palette, which makes your theme look so cool. And now you also get a couple of really cool battery widgets on Samsung, where you can keep a close eye on all your device's juice. But once again, it does look a little familiar. Let's not forget with Samsung, you can also adjust the lock screen clock with some stickers, GIFs, or pics. You can set a custom call screen background. You can even have a live lock screen wallpaper. And one of my favorite things, the jazziest keyboard you've ever seen. You still get edge screen lighting notifications that look absolutely amazing and even different color flash screen notifications. Damn. I mean, I don't know why iPhone is so limited when it comes to customization. There is so much more Apple could do when it comes to that. So this point goes to Samsung. We got to talk about some special features like the S Pen, for example. It is something so unique to the Ultra range and actually so useful. Another amazing feature you get with Samsung is under connected devices called Samsung DeX, which allows you to connect your phone to a display and quite literally turn your phone into a computer. You can even use your phone as a trackpad, then connect a Bluetooth keyboard and take advantage of way more complicated programs. But 40 Pro Max does also have some unique features of its own, like Dynamic Island, which took a notch problem and turn it into something pretty interesting. You get car crash detection, which I know has already helped some of you guys. And in some countries, you also get emergency satellite SOS. It also comes with a LiDAR sensor next to the camera that's pretty useful, but not many people know about. And MagSafe, which is great for charging, but also some cool accessories. So the iPhone 14 Pro Max does have more special features, but you can't really use all of them every day, like the S Pen and Samsung DeX, which is really useful. So this point goes to Samsung. Now, as you guys can see, the designs of these phones haven't really changed from previous years. In fact, they're almost identical and have only had minor changes. But the phones do actually feel quite different to one another and the iPhone definitely feels more premium with that stainless steel frame. But something I've always noticed people comment on is just how much heavier the iPhone feels. With Samsung on their website, you do also get a couple more vibrant color options to choose from, but I definitely suggest putting a cover on your phone just because of those sharp edges and how much easier it is to crack the screen than on an iPhone. They're also both water resistant, but Samsung up to 1.5 meters, whereas iPhone up to six. Honestly, both these phones are both like tanks, but I gotta give this point to the 14 Pro Max because of that extra water resistance and the stainless steel frame. Nice. Now, something a lot of people don't really consider when buying a phone is the ecosystem, but it's actually quite important. Apple basically pioneered the ecosystem game because of how well their products speak to one another. Like universal control or handoff mode, your tech can seamlessly transfer files and media in seconds. Samsung does have something similar called multi-control that is a bit limited, but not only can you connect to your tablet, watch, or Galaxy Buds, but also washing machines, TVs, fridges, and even microwaves, which is pretty amazing, but let's not forget on the other hand, Apple's Find My Network is literally connected to every single other Apple product out there, helping you keep track of all your items. And one of my favorite Apple features has got to be AirDrop because you can send files to so many different Apple devices in seconds. And Samsung does have Quick Share, which kind of seems limited at times, but it's definitely starting to feel more and more like AirDrop, that's for sure. So without a doubt, the 14 Pro Max gets this point, but Apple better watch out because Samsung's catching up. 
Now, when it comes to security, the S23 Ultra actually have a ton of different lock options. The safest has definitely got to be password protection where you can use letters and numbers to seriously secure your phone. You also get face unlock, which is so quick and easy to use, as well as fingerprint ID that uses your own personal biometrics. But believe it or not, none of those are as safe as iPhone's Face ID that uses a real depth camera and scans your face into a 3D model to unlock your phone, which means you can also unlock your phone in complete darkness. To make iPhone even more secure, you get lockdown mode that literally protects your phone from hackers. So although the S23 Ultra does have more unlocking options, I've got to give this point to the 14 Pro Max because of Face ID and that lockdown mode. But now the points are even. Now onto the price and at launch, the 14 Pro Max was around $1,100 and the S23 Ultra around $1,200. And although it might be obvious to go for the 14 Pro Max because it is the cheaper option, the better purchase is actually the S23 Ultra. And that is because of Samsung's crazy trading deals that are in most countries and totally change the value for money. For example, at launch, other than getting cash for your old phone, you could get double the storage for the same price. In some countries, different gifts with your purchase, different discounts for Samsung accessories, and even free streaming subscriptions. Wild. So if you think about it, the value you get out of Samsung is higher than the value you get out of Apple even if the iPhone is a bit cheaper, making the S23 Ultra technically the best phone out of the two. Nice one, Samsung. Also, this is the first time in a while I've been thinking of switching to Samsung, so what do you guys think? Should I switch? Let me know, but I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!